All right, sorry about that guys. My uh, video cut off unexpectedly, so it looks like I am going to unfortunately have to upload this in two parts. I forgot to, um, you know, go into my storage and clear out some uh, space before I started recording. Um, you know, I always do that before I start my reviews, um, but I forgot to do it this time and I guess I ran out of space while recording part one. So I apologize for that. Here is part two. I promise to keep it brief, okay? Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna get it. I'm just gonna, you know, pick up right where I left off. Um, basically, uh, yeah, I just feel like, you know, their, their figure has kind of like an odd color choice. When you look at the source material, it just, you know, a lot of the colors seem a little bit off. I think the blue is kind of questionable for his head. And then obviously the entire like, you know, robe or whatever you want to call this is definitely like in a kind of greenish gray color instead of black. So yeah, I think maybe design wise, they might have modeled this more after um, the Power Rangers Legacy Wars video game that I mentioned, you know, briefly earlier. Because um, <clears throat> here I have a image from that game of what he looks like. And this is a game image of him. Uh, so, you know, I think, you know, color wise, you can see, I think this looks a lot more similar to the figure. Um, you can see he has like a lighter color for the robe going on here. Um, as far as the head, it doesn't really seem like he has like blue or anything up top, but you know, it's a game. So, you know, that's, that's like a questionable area. Uh, but even, you know, even, you know, at least in this photo, it looks like he has more of like, you know, uh, gray or like, you know, lighter black or something at the top of his head which is like, you know, I would say more accurate to the show. So yeah, I think the blue is just kind of a weird color choice. I'm not really sure why they decided to go with blue right there, but um, but yeah, you know, so that's just something to point out. I think maybe design wise, they might have relied more on like the video game or something like that. Um, I think possibly in the Game Boy Advance game, he might have had uh, lighter colors on him too. Don't quote me on that, but you know, I never, I didn't have the game, I never played it, but I have seen gameplay of it so you know that's another possibility so you know just something to throw out there but yeah so you know now that we've seen his aesthetic I'm gonna go ahead and give him a rating for that on the clean figurine scale so out of 10 i think i'm gonna give his aesthetic like um i mean overall he looks really good so you know this is separate from accuracy so for the clean figurine scale right we have we have uh, aesthetic, accuracy, articulation, accessories, posability, capability for figures that have capes. Obviously, that's not going to apply to this guy. And price point. So for the overall aesthetic, I'm going to go ahead and give him like... I'll be generous, you know. It's a, it's a nice looking figure, um, even if it isn't the most accurate. So for aesthetic, I'm going to give him an 8. I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10 for the aesthetic. It is a pretty nice looking figure. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and give him an 8 for aesthetic. For the accuracy though, I am going to give him a little bit lower because he doesn't seem, you know, too show accurate um, from what I can see. So for the actual accuracy, I'm going to go ahead and only give him a... Oh man, I feel like I'm being kind of mean here, but you know... At the same time, you know, I got to be blunt. I got to give you guys, you know, an honest review. So based on like what was seen in the show and what we actually got as a figure, I think I'm only going to give, I'm only going to give the accuracy about a seven. You know, I'll be generous. I was going to give him a six for a second, but you know what? I'm going to give it a seven. Uh, Yeah, man, it's like. It's kind of a, it's like a low C for me, I would say, almost like a C minus just because, uh, you know, the, the uh, robe is definitely off in color. And I think uh, that blue, uh, you know, at the top of his head might even be questionable as well. So those are definitely going to knock some points off for the accuracy section. So, yeah, so we've got those two areas rated so far. Next up, we'll look at the accessories. Let's go ahead and get the accessory rating out of the way because that's pretty easy. So he's got two fist hands and two effects pieces. So for Mezagog, I think that's, you know, that's plenty. Um, for a figure like this, I don't think he really needs much more. 
maybe a stand or something would have helped, but it seems like he can stand pretty good on his own. So for accessories, I'll go ahead and give him, I'll give him like a 9 out of 10. Maybe an, another slightly different style pose hand would have been better. And then also the fact that the nails were unpainted on the fist hands is a little unfortunate. So yeah, I'm just going to give him like a 9 out of 10 for accessories. Okay. I think that's fair. Alright, so he's got a 9 out of 10 for the accessories. Let's see. Next up, we'll do articulation. Let's get into play and display for this guy. Seems like it's going to be pretty decent. Alright, and let me move my laptop out of the way. Get this back here. Alright, here we go. <coughs> So, pulling Mezagai back in to the shot. Let's get into some play and display action. Let's see what he's capable of. All right, so one of the first things I'm going to point out is that, you know, one of the first things I noticed out of the packaging, and because, you know, I think I've seen like a review or two of this guy, but uh, his jaw is articulated. So that's one of the first things I wanted to point out to you guys. So you can see that I just lifted his jaw up out of the packaging. It was like that. His jaw was like already down which I like it a lot like that. More than likely I'm gonna have them, you know, displayed or standing, you know, like this most of the time. But uh, obviously you can do the closed jaw look if you want something a little more calm. But I really do like the articulated jaw. I appreciate that Hasbro actually gave us that option to make him look, you know, more menacing or, you know, a little more docile, however you want him. So that's really cool. For the head articulation, Seems like he's on a ball and a hinge. I can see the hinge joint. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> popped right off of that ball joint. All right, so pop, pop right back on. So let's see, as far as lifting up before popping off, uh, he gets only about that much, which is decent, you know, not too bad. Uh, yeah, kind of at an angle, but not too bad. Looking down, seems like he gets about because the hinge kind of moves forward as well. You can get it to click down a little bit. And so you can get some range, you know, looking pretty good. He's basically tucking the chin in. So that's a pretty good look down, I would say. All right, coming back up. Let's see, rotation. You can rotate on that ball peg side to side very nicely. It's a little bit squeaky, you can hear that, but not too bad. You can rotate actually a full 360. As far as leaning goes, yeah, he's got a decent amount of lean in there. Pretty good, not too bad. Kind of a big ball peg, but um, it does allow him a little room for some, you know, nuanced posing, so that's cool. You can kind of rotate it around in there. So yeah, you can definitely get him into some more expressive type of poses with the head, so that's good. For the arms, let's see, ball and a hinge. They are going to be a little bit restricted uh, when going up. And out to the side because he has these uh, big, you know, shoulder plate pieces. Um, you know, these kind of spine things. So, um, yeah, it is only going to go out to about there to the side. Not quite at 90 degrees, but, you know, not too bad. Coming back down, let's see, rotation. He is going to get a full 360 rotation in there, so that's good. Uh, looks like he has, like, maybe a bit of a butterfly joint. Let's see. Yeah, he's got like a, a slight, he's got a cut, you know, in there for a little bit of a butterfly joint. It's not going to be super helpful on this guy just because, you know, the, sh the sculpt of the shoulder and these uh, armor pieces is so, you know, big and bulky that it's not really going to afford him that much extra range, you know, for lateral movement going forward and back. But uh, it's decent, you know, he can, he definitely can't like do a cross arm pose like across the body or anything like that, you know, at least not from this joint, you know, solely. Going backwards, he's only going to get about that much before it stops. So, yeah, it really doesn't do much for him just because of the sculpt of this. But, uh, you know, it is there. Okay. Bringing that back forward. He does have a joint at the elbow. I think it's a single joint. Allows him to get a good 90 degrees. So that seems all right to me. He's able to get yeah, a pretty solid nine, just about 90 degrees. Uh, and then you also have a swivel at the elbow, so that's nice. Nice little swivel action in there. <laughs> Stick his arm back out. 
Uh, you got some rotation in the hands. They go 360. They are on a hinge. And it appears to be a vertical, I mean, sorry, a horizontal style hinge. So in and out type of movement, side to side. There you go. Comes back down. Um, so yeah, all that looks pretty good. Um, let's see, for the torso, let's see if we get any leaning or crunching forward. Yeah, we get a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm thinking he has a ball peg inside of there. Definitely no uh, cut for like an ab crunch or anything. Leaning backwards, he gets about, if I really push it, about that much, a little more than going forward, I guess. So that's nice. Any leaning side to side. Uh, not much. Very, very limited for any leaning side to side, but a little something in there. Rotation. He does have a nice cut at the waist for rotation, so that's good. Nice tight joint. You can kind of feel it click into place. All right. Uh, for the legs, we're able to kick coming forward pretty decently, about a 90 degrees. And I will say, at least on the figure, it kind of feels like he has short legs. I don't know if his legs were meant to be that short, like in the show or whatever, but they just feel kind of short on the figure. Maybe it's because, like, the torso is kind of broad, you know, and then he, his legs are kind of skinny and whatnot. It just seems like, you know, size-wise, his legs seem a little bit short in length, but, you know, just something to note. Uh, this uh, kind of like skirt piece right here is a soft pliable plastic so it will move a bit and then you can move the leg or kick the leg back about that far you know standard Hasbro kicking back range uh, double jointed knees so they're gonna allow him to bend all the way basically to his lower back kick his own butt so there you go that's pretty good that's some good range for the knees See, he actually does have a boot swivel, so there's a cut actually here for a boot swivel right here. So that rotates independently of the rest of the leg. And then you have, let's see, tight hinge for the feet that allow him to go all the way down to um, his tippy toes and then click back up. See how far it kicks up. Uh, honestly, not that far. It, it, barely goes up at all it's really just going to kind of run into like his shin right here so it's really not going to go up super far um wasn't designed that way and then as far as ankle rocker yes we do have a nice ankle rocker in there a little bit of pivot action uh so yeah there you go and uh let's see out to the side for the legs let's see can mezzagog do the splits Pretty sure he's going to be limited just because the skirt piece is in the way, but, um, I mean, it feels like, you know, if you were to, you know, move this out of the way or remove this, it feels like he would actually be able to get out to the side pretty far. So with the skirt, he's able to go about that far, which is pretty decent, you know, I think for Mezzagai, that's all right. Um, yeah, so there you go. As far as uh, rotation in the thighs, let's see, it seems like there's a cut there. Yep. So we do have a nice you know, pretty uh, small cut for the um, thigh swivel. I wouldn't say it's seamless, but you know, very small cut that you wouldn't even see unless you, you know, lift the uh, this piece right here. So you get some thigh rotation in there, so that's nice. And yeah, um, so I think that is pretty much it as far as articulation goes. So let me straighten them out here. Put them down, let's see if you can stand up straight. All right, cool. All right, so for articulation, I'm going to give him a overall score of pretty good, about what I expected from, you know, a Hasbro Lightning Collection figure. I'll give it a... I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I think I would have wanted to see... I would have liked to see, you know, a little more range in the arms, particularly going forward and back. I think... I wish the, uh, you know, the butterfly joint worked a little bit better, but, you know, given the sculpt, it, it is what I expected, that it was going to be kind of limited in range. But uh, overall, I think it still looks pretty, pretty good. So, yeah, um, you know, it functions mostly well, the range of his articulation. I think um, maybe the torso could have had a little more leaning front to back. I think that would have been 
helpful as well. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give it like a, a 8 out of 10 for the articulation section. Alright, so the capability is obviously going to be a 0 out of 10 because he doesn't have a cape. So that one is irrelevant to this guy. Uh, last two points we have to look at are the posability and price point. So first off, as far as posability goes, posability I make uh, separate from articulation for those of you that are new and watching. Um, also, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please be sure to hit that subscribe if you enjoy these videos. Um, but yeah, um, I tend to make the posability and articulation a separate uh, section for the rating just because, you know, sometimes a figure can articulate, you know, very well, you know, at least at face value. You know, it might have a lot of really good joints and everything, but the posability can still suffer if, um, you know, the articulation is not, you know, properly engineered or executed. So I definitely want to kind of separate those things and give them their own rating. So if that's okay with y'all, but you know, that's how I do my reviews for these, you know, figures. So for the pose ability, let's see, I just want to try to get him into, you know, a somewhat dynamic pose. That's typically how I test the pose ability section. I just see if we can get him into you know, a uh, somewhat dynamic kind of striking pose, something that could emulate, you know, something in the show or the source material, more or less. Uh, let's see, or even, you know, go beyond the source material. So let's see. It's really gonna try to like push his joints to the limits as much as I can and really try to get him into some, you know, menacing poses here. So let's see if he's able to stand like this. I think this is a solid pose. And sometimes, I apologize, you know, sometimes I tend to do somewhat of like the same type of poses when it comes to this. Um, I'm trying to like mix it up more as I go along so that not every pose looks the same, but um, yeah, I just, I guess I subliminally have some kind of <laughs> go-to when it comes to my posing for figures of this scale. But uh, yeah, here's like a little, I just, I, you know, I did this real quick right now, but uh, here's like a little something, you know, somewhat dynamic pose for him. And I think that actually looks pretty good. Um, you know, that that actually like looks so, oh, there he goes, <laughs> lost his balance. But you know, you, you saw he was able to hold it there at least for a little bit. Um, probably just had to adjust the feet a little bit more, especially this back one, make it more flat to the ground. But you see, you can get into some pretty nice poses here. So, you know, with the articulation that's given, let's 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 try another, you know, different type of pose, something else that would look really good and kind of test his limits. Let's see. Let's see here. <laughs> the music right now is actually kind of perfect for this particular section of the review. Let's see here. Okay. Now, I'm not technically camp, uh, counting like how well he can stand in this part. Like when I get him into some of these poses, because obviously he's not going to be able to stand with some of these poses that I'm putting him in. But I just want to see, you know, can I get him even into certain poses, you know? It's like this is kind of, I was trying to kind of, I was trying to get a uh, somewhat jumping type pose. Like he's leaping or something, coming at you, you know, or like jumping straight up or something. So let's see. I think that looks pretty good. That's a pretty good pose. Let's try one more, you know. Kind of dynamic pose here. Let's get him kind of kicking or something this time. About to make Mezagog a Kung Fu warrior. <laughs> you know? Let's see. Little ninja kick. You know? <laughs> it's it's you know, I'm not I'm definitely not the greatest poser in the world. Uh given more time, you know, obviously I'd probably be able to get him into something cooler. 
but this is a review and I don't want to drag it out. But yeah, it seems like overall he can actually hit some pretty nice poses, um, especially when you start twisting the waist and things like that and tilting the head. You can definitely get him into some cool looking poses. So <clears throat> for the uh, posability section, I'm going to go ahead and give him... I'll give him a solid 9 out of 10. I think he's able to pull off some pretty good stuff here. So, posability will get a 9 out of 10. Alright. So, there you go. Alright, and... Uh, last thing to look at is the price point, alright? So, this guy being a Lightning Collection figure, um... As far as I know, he wasn't like a deluxe release or anything, so, you know, definitely didn't have like enough accessories or even paintwork, I would say, to be a deluxe figure. For for him to be a deluxe figure, his paint job should have been way more accurate, but again, this is just like a standard release, as far as I know, in the Lightning Collection with the other Rangers, so uh, let's see here. Yeah, the price point uh, is about like 25 bucks, especially if you... That is uh, Hasbro's retail price, typically, for these Lightning Collection figures. Um, I looked online, I saw him on Amazon for about 20 bucks. eBay, I think he was, uh, I saw one for 15 I'm sure, you know, price always ranges on eBay. Um, you know, some people ask some ridis ridiculous prices for a figure like this, so, you know. Um, but I did see one for 15 um, I didn't look at the actual listing, hopefully it wasn't just a box, because, you know, sometimes they will sell like just the box, but I think it was the actual figure itself uh, going for 15 on Big Bad Toy Store. He's going for 25.99, so you know a little bit more than uh, you know Hasbro's retail. Um, you know, and you got to factor in tax too. And then uh, on the actual Hasbro Pulse website itself, I saw him for 24.99. So again, standard 25 bucks that Hasbro typically ask. Um, so. Honestly, uh, you know, based on what we have here, I definitely wouldn't pay like more than 25. I'd, I'd say even 20 is, is good enough for this guy. Anywhere between 20 and 25, I think, is, I guess, a fair price for these Lightning Collection figures. Because um, a lot of them, honestly, have like issues when it comes to paint and accuracy. And so um, I think you definitely got to factor that in when considering the price point. Um, you know that they're asking because a lot of these guys could be a lot more accurate and they could definitely use you know more paint or different paint in certain areas so this guy is like a prime example of that I feel um, again I just think like the robe <laughs> kind of an interesting color that they chose for the robe I'm not gonna say I dislike it I'm just saying that it's not you know accurate to the source material um, you know that it's based on um, but you know it still looks really really nice and um, I think Mezagog is a really cool character design, actually. And the fact that, you know, um, you know, because in the Sentai, they didn't have, there was no Mezagog, right? It was a completely different uh, villain in the Opera Ranger Sentai. So I think this actual design for the American Power Ranger show, I think it actually looks really, really nice. And, you know, I'm not sure who designed uh, Mezagog, but I think whoever did it, uh, did a very, very nice job. He does look like a, you know, creepy dinosaur, prehistoric, you know, um, character. And uh, just, just very, you know, creepy and animalistic in nature. Um, I remember as, you know, watching the show as a kid, Mezogog did kind of like give me the creeps, man. Kind of, kind of <laughs> creep me out. Um, that, you know, that head and everything. Um, just very... Very creepy looking, but um, very dinosaur-like, and I do, you know, I was always a big fan of dinosaurs as a little boy, so, you know, uh, his design was definitely something that spoke to me. Um, and I could be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure in the show, these uh, these little spikes that stick out of his elbows, I'm pretty sure those are supposed to be red too. And like, am I tripping on that? Um, I'm pretty sure those are supposed to be red, you know? Uh, you guys can comment down below. I'll, I'll look at some shots of the source material afterwards, after the review too, but I'm like almost 99% sure these uh, spikes coming out the elbows should be red, just like his claws. Um, but yeah, and then it's interesting that, you know, the claws on him are painted like a uh, more like thicker saturated red, like a darker red, 
and uh, compared to like the eyebrow sections uh, that he has on his head, they're definitely like a more faded type of red color. I'm not sure if that's technically accurate too, but um, I'm not sure if those are supposed to be like the exact shame of, uh, shade of red or not, but uh, that's another thing I'll check after the review and let you guys know. But uh, I think we gave him, you know, a pretty fair rating overall. And again, as far as the price point, going from about, you know, I'm going off of retail. So being that Hasbro sells this guy for about 25 plus, you know, tax or whatever and shipping. Uh, I'll give the price point. Based on what we got on this actual figure, I'm only going to give the price point rating... You know, I'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm be a little bit of a jerk today. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten, just because you know I feel like Hasbro needs to understand that. Um, well, they already they gave up. If you guys are unaware, they don't. Uh, the lighting collection is done. They're not even making more figures, which is uh, you know a really big unfortunate thing. And I'm actually gonna make a video about that pretty soon. Uh, but yeah, they've given the rights for Power Rangers figures actually to Playmates Toys, in case you guys are unaware. So unfortunately, we're not going to get any more Ranger teams uh, to complete in the Lightning Collection. So it's really a shame, man. But, you know, Hasbro kind of, you know, gave up on that. Um, you know, I'll go more into detail when I do my video on that. But um, yeah, I'm just going to give it a 7 out of 10 simply for the fact that, you know, with all the inaccuracies on this guy, and then... Um, yeah, just, you know, uh, based on what he's capable of actually doing, I don't feel like he should be worth, I mean, 25 is an okay, you know, price point, but honestly, that's kind of pushing it, you know, getting close to 30 bucks for this guy, I don't know if that's, you know, necessarily worth it, so um, I'm going to give it a 7, um, you know, an honest rating of 7, just because I think if you're going to ask for that much, you need to have a very accurate figure on your hands here. Um, and I can't say that he is the most accurate figure to come out of the Lightning Collection by any means. So that's just me being honest. Um, if you guys disagree, let me know in the comments down below how you feel about it. But yeah, I just feel like for, for Hasbro to be charging this kind of money, we need to have, you know, a more accurate figure on our hands here. Um, that's not to say that the overall aesthetic isn't good because it is really, really nice. But uh, as far as accuracy, not the most accurate. That being said, really, really solid figure though. Overall, I do like it. And we're going to go ahead now and total up all the, uh, you know, ratings that we gave it to give it a final score on the clean figurine scale out of, uh, this time it'll be out of 60 instead of 70 because we don't have any capability. And I always rate uh, each section out of 10. All right. So for articulation, we have an eight. Accuracy, we have a seven. Accessories, we have a 9. Posability, we have a 9. No capability, alright, so 0 there. Uh, aesthetic, we have an 8. Price point, we have a 7. So let's go ahead and total that up. We've got 15 and 15, that's 30. 99, we've got 18. So that is a 40, 48 out of 60. And so percentage-wise, what is that? Let's see here. 48 out of 60, that is an 80, 80%. So this guy gets a B minus for the overall rating, all right? On the clean figurine scale, which isn't bad, you know? Still, still a pretty solid figure. So 80%, this guy gets on the clean figurine scale, not bad, not bad at all. I think he actually did pretty well for most of his, uh, you know, sections that we rated on. Obviously, if the, uh, you know, accuracy was a little bit better, then he probably would have scored quite a bit higher. Would have been a lot closer to getting an A. But uh, I think 80% is fair. I think that's a fair, you know, thing, uh, you know, overall rating for this guy. And, uh, you know, he... Despite the slight inaccuracies here and there, um, he is actually sculpted very, very nice. I like the texture and the uh, wrinkling going on back here in the robe. Very, very nice, you know, details going in here. Even like these kind of like darker gray or blue sections 
uh, you know, kind of going throughout the robe and like the color differences, you know, against the uh, greenish gray robe, like spikes and everything that that's actually looks really, really nice, even if it isn't the most accurate thing. And he's got like a nice rough kind of scaly texture going around in certain parts of his body. Like you can see here on the back of the forearm and near the elbows, he's got like a rough scaly type of texture. I really like that. Very dinosaur like. And uh, even in the chest area, you can see right here in the chest, he's got this kind of like bumpy, rocky looking, you know, uh, texture raised from, uh, you know, the figure for the chest. So I, I really like that. That looks really nice. The neck even looks kind of gnarly. It's got like a rough, almost, almost, not quite scaly, but like a rough, uh, you know, almost like rocky terrain type of texture going on for the neck. So that's really, really cool. And yeah, even the robe looks nice. The belt is really, really nice. I like the black and the silver right here with the little gold in the middle of the diamond. Very, very nice. Kind of uh, reminiscent to uh, the Ranger belts. So that's very cool. Kind of ironic, but you know, it's almost like he's tied together. You know, they're all tied together by, you know, the power of dinosaurs. So very, very cool. But yeah, overall, like a really nice looking figure. And the fact that the jaw is articulated, I really, really do enjoy that. So we get some really cool display options for this guy, right? We can make him look more angry or, you know, scary looking. And then you can have the jaw closed if you prefer that as well. So yeah, not a bad figure by any means, man. Um, so that is my final score on him. Let's go ahead and get into some size comparisons so we can head out. All right. So, the, you know, those of you that are new to the channel, again, I want to say thank you so much for, um, you know, watching my videos and subscribing if you have. Um, if you haven't, please consider doing so if you if you enjoy reviews like this because there will be plenty more on the channel. As well as some other things, you know, we're going to be talking about music, a lot more music on the channel very soon. Uh, i got some videos planned out um, as far as music goes. And, uh, yeah, just a lot of fun things we'll be doing on the channel. It's not going to be you know, strictly uh, figure reviews. We're going to be doing a whole lot over here. So just want to say thank you to all of you that are, you know, taking the time to check out these videos. Uh, hopefully they capture, you know, your interest. I'm also going to be doing uploading a lot of shorts. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen, uh, I recently uploaded some shorts. Uh, you know, I got the Thunder Rangers, you know, battling the Mass Rider Blade from Common Rider. I'm uh, making like a whole like little mini movie series out of that. That's about the closest you'll you'll ever see me get to uh, making like stop motion animation videos. But uh, yeah, I'm really having a good time, you know, shooting that. So, um, you know, frame by frame, basically, <laughs> or video by video. But uh, yeah, so, you know, check those things out when you get a chance, man. I'd appreciate it. But uh, yeah, let's get into some size comparisons. So first up, we've got the Batch 1 McFarlane Spider-Man next to Mezagog on this side and they're pretty close in height um, he's about like a six and a half inch figure as well I'd say Mezagog is just a little bit taller at the top of the head especially if you count the horns are the horns supposed to be red too now I'm questioning I, I feel like even the horns at the top of his head shouldn't be white or gray whatever color they left this I feel like are the horns supposed to be red yeah that might be another inaccuracy I'll have to look into that too and uh, yeah, I'll update all of that in the description, but I just feel like his horns are missing some color. I don't think they should be straight white like that, or whatever color you want to call that. So there is Spidey. Let's see. On his other side, we have Shocker from the Retro card by Hasbro. So there is... Those guys right there, and Shocker stacks up pretty well. I'd say just a little bit shorter than Mezagog, not by much. Might not look like it, but yeah, in person, I would say he's a little bit shorter than Mezagog for sure. All right. Ooh, there he goes. Putting those two aside, we got to get him against, you know, all the Lightning Collection, or, you know, at least all the Dino Thunder Ranger figures, of course. So first up, we have Connor McKnight. Mr. Dino Thunder Red on this side. On his opposite side, we'll get Mr. Ethan James. Dino Thunder Blue. 
Or if you want to make these the Abba Rangers, this would be Ryoga and I always forget the Blue Rangers name. Um, Hanju So or something like that. Hanju So San. I forget. I always forget the Blue Rangers name. I have to go back and uh, find out what his name is. But here are the two of them next to Mezagod. Let me back it up so you can see that better. There you go. Uh, yeah, Mezagog is actually a little bit taller than each of them, um, from the, to the top of the head. You know, he's got kind of a rounded head, but, uh, yeah, I'd say he's a little bit taller than each of these two rangers, believe it or not. So, yeah. It's moving. Ooh, sorry. Ha. Blue. <laughs> Ethan was mad. He was like, you know what, Mezagog? You finna catch the fade right now, bro. I'm gonna knock your ass out. And he did that. <laughs> Knocked him down. Alright, so... There's a guy back up here. Now we have Miss Kira Ford. All right, Dino Thunder Yellow or uh, Renru from uh, the Sentai. And then we have his son. We have Mr. Trent. Dino Thunder White. And I don't know. <laughs> Should we make him evil or good? Should this be good Trent or bad Trent? Y'all let me know. Or this could be the evil Dino Thunder clone. All right. So, could go, you know, either way. But yeah, we have his son and Miss Kira next to him. And I think the two of these figures look very, very nice next to him. I really, really wanted to see what Trent looked like next to Mezagog, um for a long time now. Because, you know, I've had Mezagog kind of on hold as far as, like, reviews go. But uh, really, really awesome to finally see Mezagog and Trent next to each other. Um, this looks really, really good. And yeah, again, I'll say Mezagog is uh, definitely bigger than Kira as far as height. And he's a little bit, just a little bit taller than Trent. So I think that actually looks pretty good. I like how that looks a whole bunch. Father and son, the evil duo. You know, when he first started out, man, he was <laughs> quite the evil ranger. So very, very nice to see father and son next to each other now. All right, moving them out the way. Next up, we have, for a Mafex comparison, we have the Mafex in-game Thor. And for another Marvel Legends, we have the Taskmaster. I like to call him the Udon Taskmaster, um, even though I know that's not what he was technically called, but that's, you know, the comic design. So, yeah, <laughs> we've got that. Mafex Thor and Udon Taskmaster, and I'll say... Thor is pretty close in height with Mezagog, just about the same same exact height. And Taskmaster, I think, is actually maybe just a, just like a hair taller than Mezagog, actually. So, yeah, Taskmaster seems to be like the tallest out of the three. All right, moving them aside. Next up, we have some more Ranger figures. We've got, for SH Figure Arts, we have the Thunder Rangers or the Go Riders. All right, so we've got the two Thunders right here. And obviously they're gonna be a little bit, you know, shorter and smaller in scale. These are SH figure arts, but uh, I think those actually work pretty well. I mean, even though they are a bit smaller, you can definitely fudge them. I always fudge these guys with the Lightning Collection figures anyways, so just cause like they're the closest thing that we have um, as far as scale and the details on them are obviously immaculate, so you know, you got to include them in there. But uh, yeah, I think these, these two look very, very solid next to Mezagon. Very, very nice. So there you have your two Thunders or Go Ranger uh, Rangers with Mezagon. All right, standing in the fight against evil. So put these guys aside. And for another SH Figure Arts comparison, we have the Green Ranger. This is the closest we're going to get for Tommy to, to the Black Ranger until I get to that review. But yeah, here is Tommy's first debut, you know, Ranger. We have the uh, SH Figuarts Dragon Ranger, a.k.a. Mighty Morphin Green. And on the other side, we have the Duel's End Darth Vader figure from Hasbro from the Black Series. And, uh, yeah, Darth Vader is definitely the biggest out of these three. He's definitely got a little bit of height over each of them. 
So I think that's actually appropriate. Darth Vader is supposed to be an actually a pretty big guy, you know. Canon wise, I believe he is about 6'9, so you know, he's a big dude. Don't want to mess with Vader, Lord Vader. Alright, for NECA, we have the Assassin's Creed Ezio figure from Brotherhood. Alright. And then for ZD Toys, we have, of course, the one and only in game Thanos by ZD Toys. Zoom out here just a bit. Oh, can't. Okay. I'll just back up the camera then. A little bit. But yeah, you can see Thanos obviously towers over both of them. Ezio is just a little bit bigger than Mezagog. Seven inch scale figure. Six, six and a half. So, you know, not too big of a height difference, but definitely some height difference there. Moving them aside. Uh, we'll do a Legacy Collection figure, in case you wanted to see that. Legacy Collection is about 6.5 inch scale, so here is the Legacy version of the White Ranger. Next to Mezagog, Father and Son again, or maybe Evil White Ranger clone, whichever one you want to choose. Or maybe Abare Killa from the Sentai, huh? And then we have the Deluxe Mandarin Spawn from McFarlane Toys on the opposite side. And obviously, Mandarin Spawn towers over each. These guys are still pretty close in height. Actually, like, just about the exact same height. Um, so, yeah. That can actually, that can work, you know, if you don't have the Lightning Collection Dino Thunder White. You can definitely maybe fudge it with the Legacy Collection Dino Thunder White. Even though, obviously, he's going to stand out from the other Rangers being a bit bigger of a build. And, uh, you know, different design. But, you know... I think it could still work if you wanted it to. Last but not least, we have the Marvel Legends Retro Card Black Cat. A beautiful figure. And on his other side, we have the... Let's see, is it Jazzwares or McFarlane Toys? I believe this one is Jazzwares. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this is the... Um, uh, what is the boy's name? I'm forgetting right now. I keep wanting to say Cyclo. Not Cyclo. Um... God, what is homie's name, guys? I, I can't remember. It's been so long since I've looked at this guy. Not Cyclo, not Dyer. This is, um... God, what is this guy's name? I forgot. It's been too long. I forgot the guy's name, but uh, I'll put it in the description um, after the video. But yeah, we have this guy from the Jazzwares, you know, collection from Fortnite. Uh, he's a Fortnite character, that's all I know for sure. But yeah, there is them, and Mezagog seems to be about the same height as Bro. Uh, obviously a little bit bigger than Black Cat here. So yeah, there you go. That's it for the size comparisons. And that concludes my review on the Lightning Collection Mezagog figure from Power Rangers Dino Thunder. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, again, if you are new, please consider subscribing. We're going to be doing a lot more on this channel very, very soon. Um, you know, outside of figure reviews, but obviously we will have plenty of those up as well. But uh, yeah, just want to thank you guys again for stopping by. Uh, really, really hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, take care of yourselves. Have a great weekend. I hope you guys all had a great Friday the 13th yesterday. <laughs> all right, I know I did. And uh, yeah, just enjoy your weekend. Be safe out there. Stay blessed. And I will see y'all in the next video, okay? Take care. It's your boy Biospider 3.0. Peace. Rah, Zeltrax, Elsa.